Hello, Business 630 class. This is Professor Hassey. It's our week two lecture video for the second week of our summer session. And this week it's entitled Capital Valuation. We're covering chapters four and five, and e even into a little bit of chapter six. Uh, talking about over the next two weeks, uh, the time value of money, bonds, stocks, and risk and return, all key disciplines in financial management. Leading up to our first case, which will be distributed and posted this coming weekend with a video introducing it, uh, that case number one will be due June 26. So no graded work this week. I will post the uh, my interpretations and grades of your discussion posts of last week by the end of this week, and with a weekend video, which will review that work and introduce case number one. So I hope everybody is fine. Uh, I'm a little late this week. I've had some very serious computer problems and I had to even go out and buy a new computer, but now everything is up to speed and I think we're back on a, a regular basis here on a time span that you guys can accept and, and know when things are coming. So first of all, uh, time value of money, that's the most important concept of capital valuation. Let's look at a short video explaining that. If you've taken any accounting courses or any basic finance courses, you've probably been exposed to something uh, called the time value of money. So we hear this concept a lot and it's something very important to the foundations of finance and to some degree accounting. So we want to talk about, well, what does this mean from a conceptual point of view? What, what is the concept here? What are we talking about when we say that money uh, has a time value. So, so let's let's look at this through an example. So let's let's take an example here. Let's say that I offer you you two options. Okay. Now, one of the options is going to be that I give you one hundred dollars cash today, hundred dollars today, and then in the other option, we're going to say that I give you. Let's change colors here again. Let's say I give you a hundred dollars one year from now one year from now now let's just assume for a moment that when i say i'll give you the hundred dollars one year from now uh, that that's certain that's not something that that i might not pay it or, or something like that it's it's guaranteed you either get a hundred dollars today or you got a hundred dollars one year from now but either way there, there's no risk associated with it you're going to get the the hundred dollars so let's look at these two options now which would you prefer now you might say well i just prefer the hundred dollars today because i just i just want the money i have something i'm already going to spend it on but let, let's just forget about that for a moment let's assume that you don't have necessarily have anything you want to buy but you do want the hundred dollars well you you might think well i'm indifferent uh, whether I get it today or whether it's one year from now. But but let's think about this because the money has a time value. Now now let's illustrate this. So let's 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 look at a little timeline here. So here in this option we're getting the hundred dollars right here, which we'll call we'll call this that's today, right right here. This is today. And then over here, uh, this is this is one year from now. One year. Uh, now let's let's go down uh, to our other option, and we'll have a little timeline. And again, we've got uh, right here is is today, and you're not getting anything today. There, there's nothing here uh, because you're getting it one year from now. You're going to be handed uh, right here a hundred dollars. Now let's let's think about things here for a moment. So when we get the one hundred dollars here today what can we do with that money well you could go out and spend it or something but let's just assume that you do you didn't spend it well what else could you do you could invest that money now let's say that you invested it in something and you you ended up getting uh, a, a five percent return let's say you took it to the bank and uh, you, you got a five percent return on, on some kind of investment now what's going to happen is that at the end of that year you don't have a hundred dollars anymore well what do you have uh, you're gonna have a hundred times 1.05 which is going to be uh, that's gonna be a hundred and five dollars so we see that if you get the money today if you get it sooner rather than later 
there's a value to getting it earlier because it can be invested to earn a rate of return and then at the end of the period you end up having more money than what you started with now when we look at the other option where you get hundred dollars at the end of the year you didn't have the option uh, of investing it here uh, because you didn't have the money so when you get the money sooner rather than later it has more there's more value there because you can go ahead and invest the money and earn a return on it so that's what we're talking about uh, when people say uh, that the time value of money uh, they're just basically saying that money is something that if you're looking at cash flows uh, cash flow today or cash flow in the future uh, a cash flow today all else equal the same amount is going to have more value because it can be invested for that that return uh, so now you might be thinking well how does this how does this have real world applications or, or what are we thinking about but let's let's say we've got some project that the firm is thinking about that project you might say okay well we're gonna uh, buy this machine and and it would uh, get, get generate cash flows over a period of let's say the five years so you can look at these these different years and you can go and say okay here's here's year one two three four five and you can say okay well we estimate that in year one if we get this machine uh, we're gonna we're gonna have a hundred dollars in cash flow in year two 175 uh, year three 200 uh, 300 and then let's say in the last year it only it generates 50 but what you can do is say okay well now we, we know we've got we we're estimating these cash flows but now what we want to do is we want to say okay well like for example a year in year five that fifty dollars we can't just add all these all these together and say okay well now we've got this sum and this is how much it's gonna is gonna generate from this product. we have taken into account that fifty dollars five years from now is not worth the same as fifty dollars today so what we're gonna do is account for this uh, time value uh, of money and uh, TV maybe not the best uh, well, acronym I have there but the time value of money we're gonna look at this and we're going to say, well, what if we can just go ahead and say we earn a 5% interest on all our investments? Then we can say, okay, let's let's figure out what that $50 five years from now is worth to, in terms of today's dollars. And when we do that, what we're doing is called discounting cash flows. So we're discounting cash flows. So those those... That 50 here, this is a cash flow in year five. And what we're doing is we're saying, what's the rate of return we could have earned on that, on money today, let's say 5%, 7%, whatever it is. And then it, let's use that to go ahead and, and discount this number and say, so it's gonna be something less than 50 because maybe it's you know 30 or 35 or whatever, yeah, depending on your discount rate, could have been invested today to get 55 years from now. So when we talk about discounting cash flows, uh, what we're doing is we're using the, the time value of money concept and some other formulas that we're going to talk about in other videos uh, to take future cash flows and figure out uh, what are they worth today. Okay, so now let's uh, look at some um, information or spreadsheet that highlight this discussion that this gentleman just gave us about, especially discounting. This is a key discipline in financial management and corporate finance, how to determine the present value of a series of cash flows generated off an asset buy into the future. Key concept in corporate finance. Here's our uh, blackboard, <clears throat> and uh, we want to go to week two this week. There's our learning assignments this week. And here's a lecture notes spreadsheet that I'm going to be talking about right now. So you feel free to download that and look it over. And, and talk about, and review it, it'll be a good template for our discussions about this week's work. Remember our next week, we have our first case study. That case study will be on chapters, um, just a momentary, had a brain freeze, chapter six, chapters four and five. And uh, that's gonna be our case study for next week. So let's take a look at the spreadsheet. So I urge you to download this and just keep it as a template or and a review note. And it includes four chapters, chapter four, six, which we're gonna talk about tonight, chapter five, which is on bonds and chapter seven, which is on stocks. We'll be covering these over the next few weeks. 
your assignment that you're going to have uh, posted this weekend will cover chapters one, four, and six. And I'll introduce that this weekend. I hope everybody's doing all right this summer. Uh, online study is a little bit uh, different and challenging. If any of you have any uh, any questions or concerns, please feel free to contact me via the discussion board, via email. Please, if you have any concerns, just let Professor Hasse know. So here's a problem here, kind of similar to what the video the gentleman just gave us, where we have an investment of $100,000. In other words, we're investing in an asset of $1,000. And we project that the revenues minus the expenses and the cash flow generated from this investment over its depreciable life of 10 years is $140,000. So an investment of 100,000 is going to produce a return in total dollars of 140,000. But is that the proper analysis to do in finance? And no, it's not. We have to take these future cash flows being received in the future and what is their discounted cash flow today? Discounted cash flow today. And how do we measure or what's the discount rate? It's the cost of the capital. Let's say this company took out a bond or got a bank loan for to get the 100,000 at a 6% interest rate. So that's called the discount rate. It's the cost of capital. So we're gonna take this $140,000 being received over 10 years and determine what is this $140,000 worth today discounted at 6%. Formulas, function, financial, and we look for the function NPV, net present value. There it is right there. All our nice spreadsheets, Apple numbers, Excel, Google, Google spreadsheets all have functions. We want the NPV function, which is going to be determining the discount rate of the discounted cash flow. So we bring up NPV. We put in the interest rate, which in this case is 6%. That's our cost of capital. And then under values, all we do is we paint from year one to year 10. Year one through year 10. And this 140,000 discounted at 6% equals $96,122.63. Whoops. It's now below the inv initial investment today. So our NPV is the difference between the investment and the discounted cash flow. Our NPV is negative. $3,877.37. That's a problem because our money's costing us 6%. This is only returning us. We can determine the return in a percent very easily by using the internal rate of return method. Also another function, let's, let's see that. Function, financial, IRR. If we take under values, the investment of $100,000, let's go to, let me just re redo this spreadsheet here. Let me, uh, let's add another column here. Make this easy to understand. There we go call this year zero. And that's the investment year. And we're investing $100,000. Okay, now what is the return in this in a percent? Formula, as I was starting out before, formulas, function, financial, internal rate of return. And now under values, we just paint from year zero to year 10, the length of it, and we get an interest rate 
let's go to a two decimal points, be official here, we get a return of 5.33%. So now we understand why this is a negative NPV, because the actual return in a percent over the 10 years is less than our cost of the capital. We got a problem. Either we, to solve this problem, we have to find a way of increasing the cash flows over the 10 years or find cheaper money. And today, June 15th, 2022, are we going to find any cheaper money? I don't think so. Inflation is 7%. And today, the Federal Reserve of the United States increased the discount rate by a whopping three quarters of a percent the greatest increase in 40 years by the Federal Reserve to the discount rate. Money is getting more expensive. When money gets to be expensive, valuation and return go down. And that's one of the issues confronting the economy right now that a lot of people are nervous about. We might go into recession because money is becoming more expensive and coming out of the pandemic, we're not earning as much as we should. Thus, that has a problem, a discussion for another day. But this is the key point of the time value money for this financial management class. We use that concept of discounting to determine the return over a future cash flow in relationship to the investment. This concept is used in capital budgeting. It's used in investment return analysis. It's used in stock management. This is a key concept you need to be aware of in chapter four, discounted cash flow. And here's a perfect example of it here. In chapter six, when you start reading that, it's talking about risk and return. And we'll talk more about this in our video at, in the weekend and in, into next week. But what we're talking about is that when we make an investment, what is the risk to the people giving us the money? Is it high risk or low risk? Well, risk is defined in chapter six as beta. Beta is a statistical regression analysis of the standard deviation of a set of returns compared to the market. I'll give you an example of beta. Today, the 10-year United States Treasury yield closed at a return of 3.371%. That's the yield. That is a beta of zero. No risk whatsoever. That's why they call it the risk-free interest rate. There's no risk. So if you want to make some money today with no risk, buy a 10-year United States Treasury yield. You'll get on $1,000, $33.71 a year for 10 years. But if I want average risk, which is the beta of 1.0, that's average risk, that means the return on the Standard & Poor's 500 index. Right now, as of today, that Standard & Poor's 500 index has a market return of 10%. So if you want average risk, which is still risky, Remember, beta zero is no risk at all, but average risk means you're going to get that return, but there's a chance you might lose it as well, but that return is at 10% today. Well, let's say I have a company called AA Corporation. And AA Corporation, like any corporation, calculates their beta over four years, a rolling average over four years or 16 quarters. And that beta for this company is 0 0.80, 0 0.80. So naturally riskier than the 10 year United States Treasury, naturally riskier or, and less risk than the market return. So again, remember this is the 10 year United States Treasury yield. This is the S&P 500 market return. And this is the return. So the question is now, how do we determine the return or the expected return 
for AA Corp. Well, we use what is discussed in chapter six, which you need to study. We need to study and understand the capital asset pricing model, which takes the return of zero risk, the return of average risk, and compares it and correlates it with the return of the beta of the company you're seeking the information for. And here's the formula here in this cell. It takes the risk-free interest rate and adds that rate to what is called the market premium. The market premium is the difference between the market return and the risk-free rate. That's called the market premium. And that amount is multiplied by the beta of the specific company. So if I take 3.371%, add that to the difference between 10% and 3.371% times 0.8, I get 8.67% expected return. This is also called the cost of equity. This is also called investor expected return. Why is it 8.67%? Because if I wanted to risk, have no risk, I'm going to get a return of 3.71. If I want average risk, I'm going to get 10% return. But if I want a little bit less or better risk than average, like 0.8, in AA Corp, I'm going to expect to get 8.67% return. So my idea as an investor, if I really think, and I look at the projections and the estimates of AA Corp, which every American corporation has to produce every quarter, their expected profits and cash flow for the next 12 months. If I think the company is going to make that 8.67% in the next year, I will buy the stock today. I will invest in it because I think I'm going to get my expected return. But during the course of those 12 months, if all of a sudden AA Corp is not doing as well as they projected, I have to make a decision as an investor to sell the stock and get out before it even goes down farther or hang in there and hope the company can turn it around. Welcome to the United States stock market. People buy and sell based on the expectations that they anticipate getting as a return into the future. So chapter six is a study of the calculations and the definitions of those returns, both ex investor inspected, expected returns, and the definition of beta, which shows a correlation and a definition of the risk in the market need you to study these two areas this week and then next week we'll get into bonds and stocks but keep this spreadsheet it will be our study guide for this week and you'll have questions concerning itself with chapter four and six in addition to one in next week assignment which will highlight in my video this weekend so that's the spreadsheet for our template review for this week Remember chapter six was our topic for week number one, chapter four and five of our topics for this week and chapter seven for next week. So here's all those tabs in this. Here's chapter four this week, chapter six, what we just talked about last week, chapter five I'll talk about in my weekend video, chapter seven next week. I keep referring to chapter one in tonight. It's not right. Our case study beginning posted this weekend will be on chapters four, five, and six. Okay, everybody. That pretty well concludes my introduction video for this week number two. Look, stand by for your case and some additional information and your grades later on this weekend. And if you have any questions or concerns, be sure to let me know. Uh, you know where to find me. So have a great rest of the week, and we'll see you all this weekend. Adios.